Hello there and welcome back to another Luminar Neo video. Today we are excited to share with you the latest update for Luminar Neo. This update includes the highly anticipated panorama stitching extension which is now available to the public. We will start by going through the list of all the updates before diving into the application to explore all the new features. Additionally, we are hosting a live Q&A session on our YouTube channel tonight at 8 pm UK time to answer all the questions you may have about the latest Luminar Neo update. Luminar Neo is here with its new version 1.12.0 and it keeps getting better with every new update. You can now access the new panorama stitching extension allowing you to easily stitch together seamless panoramas from multiple photos or transform video into panoramic photo. You can also achieve vibrant and dynamic HDR panoramas and combine a moving object across multiple frames into single action photo. On the top of it, you will also experience performance and stability improvements when using AI tools as Skylum updated their own internal AI library. All of this should make your photo editing experience even smoother. Plus, you will enjoy more stable editing when using resources consuming tools such as SuperSharp AI and Relight AI. And there is also a really cool trick we're going to show you on how you can drag and drop your images onto the extension and start using them immediately. On top of that, at the end of the video, we will also share with you some news about our brand new panorama stitching presets. Now, as always, if you want to see a full list of all the new updates and features, make sure that you visit Skylum website at skylum.com slash what's new slash Luminar Neo. And now, finally, we are in Luminar Neo, where first of all, we're going to make sure that we are running the latest version of the software. To do that, we're going to go to the top left corner of the screen, click on the Luminar Neo logo and select about Luminar Neo. Looking at the new window, you can see that the current version is 1.11.0, so we need to update it. Let's close it by clicking on the red button and let's go back to the Luminar Neo logo. Click on it and select check for update. By doing that, it will open a new window, which will tell us that we have a new version available and we can update it. To do that, we just gonna click on install update and follow the instructions on the screen. So the update is finished and we are in the new version of Luminar Neo. And since the main point of this update is the panorama stitching extension, let's start with that. So what does this extension do? Well, this feature seamlessly stitches together multiple photos to produce expansive panoramas that captivate viewers with stunning landscapes and cityscapes. And moreover, this extension also allows you to convert videos into panorama images or select a focal point in the video to achieve trendy result. If you don't have it yet, there are three ways of how you can get it. You can purchase it as an individual extension. You can also purchase it as a part of the extension pack. And finally, you can subscribe to Luminar Neo with the Pro or Ultimate Luminar Neo subscription and get it that way. Now, if you're planning to get it, you can use the link in the description of our video. And also, don't forget to use our discount code CPNEO10 and get 10% on your purchase. Once you get the extension, you will have to install it into your application. To do that, you need to navigate to the top right corner of the screen and click on Extras. This will open a new window and here make sure that you are on an extension tab. Scroll down until you see the panorama stitching and here you're going to see a button that will say Install. Simply click on it 
And once it's finished, it will show the same as you see on my screen, just saying install. Once you finish here, click on the red dot and close this window. So now we have installed the extension and we can finally use it. To use it, you can find it on the left toolbar in a catalog module. If you own any of the previous extensions, they are also here. As you can see, the HDR merge, focus stacking, upscale and panorama stitching. To use it, you need to click on it and it will uncollapse. Now, if you want to see a full tutorial covering all the different controls in this extension, we already have a video covering all of that on our YouTube channel and I will make sure I link it in a corner of the video right now. So for now, I'm just going to show you a simple edit. Let's select all of these images and drag and drop them onto the extension. Once we do that, they will appear in this preview area. And before we start with the stitching, we can click on a circle with the three dots to open the settings. Here, make sure that the distortion correction, the vignette and chromatic aberration reduction is on. If everything is good, click away and then click on start button. The application will prepare a preview of the panorama and we will be able to start. On the first screen, you are able to transform and inline your image. First of all, you can go to the bottom left corner where you can adjust the panorama projection. We have a choice between spherical, cylindrical, mercator, plane and fisheye. You can switch between them and try them. However, for now, we will stick with a spherical and continue. Now you can use the scroll on your mouse to zoom in or out. And you can also hover outside of the image and rotate the image around. Once you're happy with the rotation, you can zoom in and you can drag the image around using the cross overlay as a guide. You basically want to make sure that everything looks natural and it is as straight as possible. Since this is quite big panorama, everything is looking good. So what we can do, we can just click on continue in the bottom right corner. The next screen we're going to see is focusing on cropping. Here, it gives us the same option as in the cropping AI in the edit module. We can adjust it and basically just position it over the image. So let's make it all a little smaller. And once you're happy, we could continue. Before we do that, I want to point you to auto crop option. When you click on this button down here, it will basically stretch the crop area as much as it can, making sure that there is data everywhere or there is a little bit of the image everywhere. So once again, if you want, you can adjust it or you can keep it with the auto crop. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And once we are done, we're going to click on crop again in the bottom right corner. In the final window, it will show you a preview. And now you can click on save and basically create a new panorama. If you want to adjust anything, you can use this little arrow to go back. However, I'm happy with the result, so we're just going to click on Save. Once the new file is created, it is placed into the Panorama Stitching folder in your folder section of the catalog module. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how you can create Panorama out of the video. For this, we're going to use the video right here, and the workflow is same. We drag and drop it onto the extension. When you place a video into the extension, you will see that you will get this little movie icon. After that, click on start and you will see that the first window is a little bit different than for the photography. You will see the preview of the video and traditional video controls. Now you can click on play and preview the video and you can also look at the beginning and end of the timeline. Let's go back to the beginning. And just looking at the numbers, the first number is where your timeline is or where the playhead is. And the second number is the length of the video. So now let's have a look at the timeline. The playhead in the blue is right here. And you can basically just drag it around to make sure you select the specific areas. 
that we want to position us at the beginning of our panorama. So this is somewhere around here. And once we're happy with the position, we're just going to take this handle at the beginning of the timeline and drag it into the same location. Now we are looking for the end of the panorama. For that, again, we're going to position our head around. And when we happy, which I think is around here, we're going to use the second handle and just position it there. Now I am happy about the selection. I will not use the custom object composition so I can switch it off. And all there is left to do is to click on continue. Once the video is processed and the panorama is stitched, you will end up on the same window you have seen earlier. Once again, this is where you transform the image. And since you already seen this part, we're not going to continue from here. Instead of that, I want to show you how we can use the selective object feature in the extension. For this, we're going to need different video. So let's just drag and drop it onto the extension and again, click on start. We are on the familiar view again with the video preview. And when we drag it around, you can see we have the skateboarder sliding through. So first of all, we're going to switch on our custom object composition. After that, we're going to position the playhead to the area we want. So let's start somewhere here. Once we're happy with the first framing, we will click on the little blue square with the white cross. After that, a little selective area appear. You can drag it around and then use the handles to adjust the position and select the subject. Now, after that, we're going to take our playhead and move it further. So we're going to end up somewhere here. Again, click on the blue square with the plus sign. And you already know what to do. Adjust the frame around and make sure that the guy is selected. Now, moving even further, let's go here. And you know what to do. Plus sign and positioning it around the subject. Make sure there is a little bit of space around. And to finish it off, and to finish it off, let's go to the end and again, plus sign and again, position over the subject. Once we finish selecting as many positions we want, all we need to do is to click on continue. Now, once everything is stitched together, again, we can see the preview here. Now, you already know what to do on this window. What I more want to show you is how the result looks. So by selecting the different subjects or the same subject multiple different times, you will end up with this very creative view. You can see that we can see his head after that coming up, coming down, then sliding around and ending here. Now the result isn't perfect and you need to take a little bit of time adjusting it. However, I think it can be really cool and very creative. So make sure that you give it a try. Now moving through our list, I can't really show you the update on the AI library or the smoother editing with SuperSharp and Relight AI. However, one thing I want to show you is a quite neat feature on how you can drag and drop images into the extensions even when they are collapsed. So instead of having have to go in, clicking on them and opening them, what you can do is to select the images. So let's say the 15 images here and then you just drag and drop them onto the extension. And once you over it, you just let go. This way, the extension will open and the images will be added into it. Now this work for all the extensions here. Let's say we're going to try with the HDR. So let's select three images right here and we're going to drag and drop them onto the HDR merge. Once I let go, again, it opened the extension and add the images there. And finally, let's look at our newly launched Panorama Stitching Presets. These presets are exclusively designed for the new extension to help you transform your panorama into a masterpiece in just a few seconds. You can find this preset collection in our Luminar Neo Essential Preset Bundle which is available on our website at cleverphotographer.com. To get the best deal 
follow the link provided in the description of this video. Now, if you already own the Essential Preset Bundle, you can download the new preset collection for free from the members area of our website. And that's all the news for today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future news or updates. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.